I'm back, witches. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Oh, it's so nice to be in front of a camera again. My little Leo self was like, I'm not getting enough attention. That's a joke, by the way. Thank you so much for everyone who continued to watch my content and support me through my shop, through my Patreon, over my month long break. It was the most needed thing in the world. And in fact, my editor has actually <laughs> has taken on a new job. Um, Voga is gonna be reminding me once a month to take a break <laughs> because I just had such a good time and I'm so full of like creativity and ideas and all the good stuff. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna film two more today, which is wild, four, three, and then one tomorrow maybe. Insane, absolutely crazy. But I wanted to come back and kind of almost build off of the reconnecting with my goddess video, which was my last video. I also noticed kind of as I took my break, there was a lot of reevaluating spirit work and spirit relationships and a lot of kind of figuring out how veneration, worship, and even working with these spirits fits into my day-to-day um, -day practice offline and online. And I've shown a lot of that, I think, in the vlogs, but I did want to make more of an informational-based video surrounding practical veneration and worship. Just some ideas on how to... In Hi, stop attacking the mic, baby. I was very much inspired to make this video because someone was talking on reconnecting with my goddess. Like, I feel like people make deity work so complex. They make it seem so intense and like so much needs to be done. And in reality, devotion and working with the deity looks really different depending on who you are and your practice and how much you can give on a daily basis. I also wanted to expand in the ways we can honor our spirits in a day-to-day -day real life way that's also kind of friendly to low energy. I read something by Jason Miller today. We're reading Financial Sorcery for a book club, which by the way, it's turning out to be an amazing book. There's still time you can join in and talk about it. It's such an interesting book, but as he was talking about a money altar and offerings to spirits, he said, libations have to be replaced. It doesn't, or like you have to give offerings and treat this altar as if it's a living thing. You can't abandon it. But what he said is you have to replace these offerings, but the matter of which, how frequently you do it, is up to you as a practitioner. And he was like, don't overextend yourself. Don't do more than you need to. Know what your limits are and commit to it. So for me, there are things that I do once a month, every like the first Friday, the first Wednesday of every month. And then there are things that I do every two weeks or try to do at least weekly, which I think really influences the kind of offerings we give. If we give offerings like water, coffee, food that can mold, you have to replace those or they go bad. And so I only have a couple things on each altar that I actually replace every day, but I have things that I do for those altars and spirits like every week or once a month. Some of them every week, mostly my ancestors. Everyone else, once a month. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about a few, few things to keep in mind when we talk about practical veneration, when we talk about worship, when we talk about taking this really big thing that I think is often seen as very elaborate and very complex, especially on the internet, but in reality can be as simple or as complex as you wanna make it. Some things to keep in mind. Time is devotion. You don't need objects. You, you have time. You have your time that you can dedicate and devote to a spirit or a deity. And that includes sitting with a spirit and talking with them, including them in your day-to-day -day practice, cleaning off their altar, doing particular research surrounding them. It could be lighting a candle as you get ready to, for the day or just five minutes at their altar. This could be done on a weekly basis, monthly, daily, whatever you think about. But I think in order to reframe veneration and worship as something that's accessible to a lot of people, we need to reframe it as time is devotion. When you are taking time out of your day to do something for that deity, to do something for that spirit, you are devoting something to them. If you are researching about them, if you are spending time learning about how other people work with similar spirits, so in terms of plant alleys, if you're researching that plant, you're sitting with that plant, you're um, 
learning more about how to use the plant. That is an offering. Your time can be an offering. Another thing to keep in mind is that certain spirits ask for more. I have a cemetery spirit that I visit with once every month and a half, but my ancestors get something every day. I'm giving them wine at night or coffee in the morning. I Once a month I'll go to a bakery and get biscotti just so they get a biscotti offering. It really is about prioritizing your spiritual team. Who are the spirits and entities that you go to the most for your practice and well-being? Are they prioritized in the same way within your day-to-day -day life and practice? For example, if you're going to your ancestors for everything, they are the, your first line of defense, they are the most important aspect of your practice or they're very important but you're not giving them offerings at least once a week it may feel a little unbalanced versus a spirit maybe you petitioned for one thing you did kind of a transactional deal with you still have to keep up that relationship if you want that work can to continue but you don't necessarily have to do it as frequently. Like I said, this cemetery spirit was like every seven weeks you can come and bring me things and that's it. I don't need to see you more. And I'm like, okay, neat. A lot of times, uh, I see a lot online of really elaborate altars <laughs> and I think that's just me. And I think that they are so gorgeous and so beautiful. I have a lot of goals. Like I would love to have Diana have her own like table eventually, but right now I just don't have the space to do that. What I do have altar wise is I mean Mary has a com her own altar, Diana's statue and like a few offerings are on my working altar and then I have a pine tree outside where I lay uh, plant for, uh, environmentally friendly libations to Diana. But these are not just offerings don't have to be the end all be all a sacred space doesn't have to be the end all be all you definitely i think want a sacred space but creating an altar for an entity is kind of like how much space do i have and what can i make work <laughs> not let me make sure this is the biggest thing in the world when you have like a tiny little house and i think that a lot of the time altars can be super expansive or they could just be a pig, a, like a representation of the deity or spirit, a picture, and then a candle. You can even do a candle with representation on it. I have slightly more elaborate altars for certain spirits, such as like my money altar to my money spirits and the saints and entities I work with on that. Fortuna's altar is my smallest altar actually, and she is one of the deities that I petition for um, luck. She helps me with the Lady Luck oil. Mary's is on the smaller side and my biggest altar is actually my working, like my desk altar, which is my money altar. Everyone else is kind of tucked away in little corners, but I've noticed that it doesn't, the size of the altar doesn't necessarily correspond to the importance of the entity. It more has to do with how frequently are you giving that altar attention? How frequently are you giving an offering or devoting your time to those spirits? Offerings are always kind of like libations, are always kind of the first area we can talk about in terms of accessibility. Water is fine. Water is a fantastic offering for all types of spirits. I know of someone in my, in my Discord who was like, I just give my deities water a lot of the time and they love it. And I'm like, they fucking love water. Water is great. Water is fantastic. If you want to do food, coffee, liquor, you can do that. Fresh offerings can be replaced as you feel daily. For me, every couple days I'm switching out liquid offerings, mostly because I don't like how they dry in my vessels. But like I said, ancestors get something every day. My money altar gets something like maybe once a week. Um, some of my altars don't even have uh, liquid offerings. That's only for two of my altars and two kind of spirits or two collections of spirits. Mary gets has oils, like like holy water, a candle, and a statue. And I don't really touch her altar a lot. She's just kind of right there. I'll use things off her altar or burn a candle to her if I really need her assistance, but I don't do a lot of offerings to her. I just have her space and I keep it maintained. Offerings in terms of food uh, can also be cooking something 
cookies they like, if an ancestor or spirit has a very specific dish they love, you can give them that. Libations or offerings of water or food may not be something that's accessible. So then we're talking about time, right? Or activities that you can do. So there are kind of like three sections with ideas, offerings, time, active or offerings, activities, time. Some activities you can do wearing devotional oils or jewelry. I have two devotional oils, three in my store. One's for Fortuna, one's for Diana, one's for Mary. I wear them depending on who I'm trying to connect with more, or I use them in spells where I want their influence to come in. You can also get a perfume or create a devotional oil yourself. That would be a lot of sacred plants associated with that deity a base oil, any scents associated with them, and maybe a petition to them. And that's how you kind of do it. You can pray over it, you can bathe it in incense, you can add whatever you want that you associate with that entity you work with. Devotional perfume, I have a rose perfume I wear, I have a mandrake perfume I wear. I actually have two rose perfumes. Both of those are when I want to like, when I want to bring mandrake more into my life, I'm wearing mandrake. When I want to bring rose more into my life, I'm wearing a rose perfume. And it's like devoting my day or my activities while I'm wearing that to the spirit. You can actually say that too. You can put it on and be like, I'm devoting this to you. You can wear necklaces, jewelry, bracelets that you devote to something, scents, uh, spending time with them, or the more kind of activities you can do. Um, that kind of overlap with time. You can spend time researching the entity, you can spend time tending to their altar, you can uh, create something for them, like a candle, an oil, that's an activity. Uh, you can do an activity that brings attention to them and their teachings or is something that they would have done. So for example, if I am want to devote some time to Diana, maybe I'll write a Patreon blog post that month about Diana and her epithets, which I actually did do, available at the Rosa Tier. Or with my ancestors, if I want to devote an activity to them, I try cooking. Um, and I cook a traditional Italian dish or I make Sunday sauce, or I try my hand at something new that they would have eaten a lot of. I also could spend time learning the language. For different spirits, if you're looking at plant spirits, local spirits, you can spend time cleaning things, taking out na um, invasive plants if they're a native plant, uh, watering them, even going out of your way <laughs> to water a plant every day because that's what I have to do with my outdoor plants. That's devotional. You're spending time with that plant. You're tending to that spirit. And that is in itself a devotion because you are taking the time to do something for that spirit. You're act doing an activity with that spirit. More kind of fun things you could do is you could like go on a walk. You could teach a class. You could do something in honor of that deity that includes their name. You could make a post about them if you wanted to. A lot, like I said, a lot of spirits are going to ask for more. Certain spirits may require a certain amount of something in order to keep up that relationship. This is in part about you prioritizing which spirits have the most and deities have the most effect in your life and giving them the most attention, but it's also in part that sometimes you meet a spirit who doesn't want a lot or wants a lot. And maybe it's not that frequently, but it may be a lot like financially, so you have to plan for it. In my experience, I, a lot of spirits and deities will tell me what offerings they want. Diana really prefers when I devote activities to her, when I create things in her name or offer services in her name, or just kind of spread and like write and teach about her. On the other hand, my ancestors are very personal. They love when I cook with them, I light their candle and I cook, when I clean my house, when I bring values that they also valued into my life in a really real and tangible way. They are single-handedly why I keep my I clean my house every week now. Never used to do that. I was not a cleaning person. That is devotion. That's also part of my routine. Hello, Apollo, please. That's so bright. That's also part of kind of my devotion to myself. Keeping my space clean allows me to create better. It makes me feel better. It makes me happy. It's very meditative. On the other hand, on my money altar, I have a ritual I do first Wednesday of every month that includes every single aspect 
of like my money altars or the spirits I work with for money, whether that's anointing things in their name, giving them new offerings, feeding them incense, smoke, uh, certain types of oils. I give them that attention and I plan for it because I know it's going to take up more of my time. And that's why I do it monthly and not weekly because I will forget if I do it on a weekly basis. <laughs> this is also recognizing oh, these bigger rituals I need to plan for. I need to set aside a day to do it. Or these bigger offerings, these times when I'm gonna spend the whole day working and feeding spirits and spending time with them, I have to really like say, that's happening this day. Can't do it any other day. Versus switching out water, switching out brandy, switching out wine, that takes me a couple minutes. It is easier for me to do physical libations and offerings than it is actually to do a lot of other things. I find that I have to take a lot more time to plan out more elaborate rituals or spells and that it's easy for me to remember to do coffee every morning. Maybe spend five minutes uh, pulling a card where my ancestors' candles lit. Uh, and I am lucky to kind of have that be accessible to me, whereas other things may be accessible for other people. Practical veneration and worship, I hope this video gave you ideas, but at the end of the day, this is about you kind of sitting down and being like, who do I really, who really supports me spiritually? Who do I have time for? How can I bring, what, what, what is accessible to me? And I know all of my videos are like this at this point where I'm like, do what works for you. But in this case, it really is doing what works for you. It's sitting with your spirits and saying, okay, what do you need from me and what can I give you? Is that going to be where your biggest kind of influence in your life gets an offering every day? Or is that going to be they get in every week and everyone else is kind of every other month or every few weeks? Is it plausible for you to spend time kind of creating these more elaborate rituals where a lot of spirits get taken care of at once? Or do you, need, do you find that you need to do things smaller and broken up? I also work with a lot of spirits. My friend, as we sat in this reading, which by the way, if you ever wanna get a reading from him, he is Traveling Witch on Instagram. Gabriel is absolutely amazing. He reads at Ritual Craft. I don't know if he does virtual readings, but he does do in person. So if you're in Colorado, get a reading from Gabriel. As I was sitting with Gabriel in this reading, he was like, "You, there are two kinds of kind of like relationships with spirits. There's a transactional and there's an intimate. You have to choose the transactional or the intimate and keep it that way. The transactional, you have to continue that transaction, even if it's not very frequently, in order to ensure that that relationship with the spirit continues, especially if they're helping you with certain aspects of life. For intimate, you're spending a lot more time giving to these spirits, but you're, it, there's, they're very intimate relationships. It's about spending time saying, who do I want to be transactional? Who do I want to be intimate? What do I have time for? What is accessible to me? And going from there. And then you kind of build off that, like, what's practical? How do I, how do I plan for this? Or how do I bring this into my life? It feels hard, but I swear I Recon in my like in my reconnecting to my goddess video, I spent a lot of time outside. I went to the mountains and I connected with Diana just by putting on her devotional oil and just spending time in nature. And that's similar with a lot of animal and plant spirits, especially if you're working in an area where there's plant and animal spirits live. But yeah, I would love for you to share your practical devotion and worship in the comments. Tell me what you do for your spirits and your deities or whatever you're comfortable with sharing. Tell me if it's once a week, once a month, once a day. Really, I swear that's only my ancestors get that. <laughs> Everyone else gets like maybe once a week, every other week etc. Um, but I want to hear more about it and I want to hear more about your practice. So let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you want, you can subscribe, subscribe, like, turn the notification on, um, but absolutely no pressure. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to drink water. It's hot and have a fantastic rest of your day. Que Dios te benedica. I think that's, is that, is that how I end these? Que Dio di Benedica means God, may God bless you, which is the Italian thing to keep away the evil eye. But I feel like I used to say something else. Siate Benedetti?
Siati. It's something along those lines. I just have a blessed day. <laughs>